have a projectile motion question that involves creating a formula that relates y and x together. So I'm going to set this up and try and do part A. I've got some horizontal ground and then a particle following a kind of parabolic path as shown. And it's got initial velocity, which has already been split into components. So the horizontal component is u and the vertical component is v. And then we're asked that the path follows this equation. So I'm going to define a general point capital X with coordinates x, y, because we're told that um, these are the units in the horizontal and vertical direction. And let's take a look then, O to X. So if I first of all look at the vertical component, and I'll apply up as positive, then writing SUVAT down, I'm going to get Y for S, my U is going to be capital V, my A is going to be minus G because gravity is acting down, and then I can write an equation down involving T as well because that is going to be the link to the horizontal component. So S equals UT plus half AT squared, that's the one that doesn't involve V, and therefore Y is equal to capital V times T minus a half g t squared. Let's take a look at the horizontal to the right. So now the initial velocity is actually capital U and the final velocity is also capital U because there's no acceleration. S is equal to x. So my s equals ut plus half at squared simply becomes s equals ut. So s is equal to ut and therefore x will equal u, capital UT. So I'm trying to get an equation involving just x and y, and therefore it makes sense to make t the subject of this one rather than the quadratic. So t is going to equal x over u. And what I can do now is substitute that in to this one on the left. So y is equal to capital V times x over capital U minus a half g x over capital U all squared. Okay, just tidy this up a bit. So capital V x all over U minus g x squared over 2 U squared. And I'm going to multiply through by 2 U squared. So on the left hand side, I'll get 2 U squared Y equals 2u squared vx over u, so they cancel, and then minus gx squared times 2u squared over 2u squared, so they cancel as well. You might not even have written them in, to be fair. And that is looking an awful lot like this. So 2u squared y, we have that, 2u vx, yep, minus gx squared. So I just, it's a little final bit. I'm just going to write it as, a, as they've asked. Brilliant. Let's move on to part B, just bearing in mind this formula. So we're told that during the motion, B just clears a vertical wall of height a half A at a horizontal distance A from O. So here's the ground. Starting with O, there's going to be a wall here after A meters, which is a half A in height. And B strikes the ground at a horizontal distance 3A beyond. Now this actually caught me out when I did it. I didn't read it quick, you know, I read it too quickly and I put 3a as the distance, but it's actually going to be 4a. And I've put, um, it, not that it really matters, but I put the half a in the right place because the midpoint is going to be at 2a. So it's going to be before, it's going to be on the way up rather than on the way down. 
All right, this is enough information to substitute into my formula. I'm actually going to start with the second one. So um, I've, I'm going to have x equals 4a and y is equal to 0. I'll put that in first and then I'll deal with x equals a, y equals a half a. When I substitute y equals 0 in, the left-hand side becomes 0. So 0 will equal 2uv multiplied by 4a minus g times 4a all squared. That means that 8uva will equal 16a squared g. I just squared it and I've just got it on opposite sides. So I can cancel out the a's and I can divide through by 8. So uv is equal to 2ag. Now let me just add that we are actually trying to work out the angular projection. So remember, we're going u along and v up, and I want this angle here, theta. So if I can work out v over u, then I'm sorted, because then tan theta will equal v over u. All right, we'll just leave that there for the moment. I'll just put, I'll just underline it, I think. So now substituting in the other one, I'm going to get 2u squared times my half a. And that is going to equal 2uv times a minus g a squared. So what can I do? I can divide through by a. And I can cancel these out. So I've got u squared equals 2uv minus ga. Now remember I said about wanting to find v over u. I can now substitute in, therefore, for a. Here we've got a is going to equal uv over 2g. So put that into here. u squared equals 2uv minus g times uv over 2g. These cancel. And I'm going to get 3 over 2. So it's 2 minus a half, essentially. Or maybe I'll write it as 4uv over 2 minus uv over 2. So u squared equals 3uv over 2. And cancel out the u's and here we are, we've got a relationship now between u and v. So u is equal to 3 over 2v. That means that v over u is going to equal 2 over 3. And tan theta is therefore going to equal v over u, or 2 thirds. And theta will be inverse tan of 2 thirds. Thirty three point six nine zero or thirty three point seven degrees. Then, given that the speed of projection is fifty four point six, so what that means is that we can use Pythagoras u squared plus v squared square rooted must equal 54.6 and I can substitute in for u so it will be 3 over 2v all squared plus v squared will equal 54.6 squared this is 9 over 4 and this becomes v squared is just 4 over 4, so it's 13 over 4. v squared is 54.6 squared. So v will equal or times by 4 over 13. And then um, square root, it will end up as... Actually, sorry, I'm, I feel like I'm doing it too quickly. So it's going to be this. So therefore v 
will equal, I'll just put it all on the square. You could square root the 54.6, square root the 4, and then have the square root of 13 in there, but I don't know why I'm messing about with this. Let's just get the value. So 42 root 13 over 5, 30.286. And then just trying to remember, because remember, we're trying to find A. So if we work out U as well, then we're sorted. So U is going to equal 3 over 2 times that. Which in this case is just 1.5 times that. Maybe I should have left it exact, actually. 63 root 13 over 5. Another one was 42 root 13 over 5. So then A, as we saw from above, was uv times 2g, sorry, uv over 2g. Answers what I had stored as uh, the other one. I can't remember which, whether it's U or V. It was, sorry, it was uh, V. Which gives us 70.2. So it's quite nice. I left that exact because we get this exact answer 70.2 meters. Nice. We're nearing the end. But thou asked to find the maximum height of B above the ground during its motion. There's more than one way to do this. So two ways that, I, that would jump to mind for me is first of all, deal with SUVAT and set the and deal with O to this point here, which I might call C, and then set the final velocity equal to zero for the vertical direction, because it will momentarily have um, zero velocity as it as it pauses in midair. So you can use v squared equals u squared plus 2as and solve it from there to find out what uh, the height is, the maximum height is. There is another way, though. It's, it's worth being aware of this. It's a little bit quicker if you know it, because we talked about the fact, actually, I already mentioned it, that there's a line of symmetry down the parabola. And so this point here, where, where c is, is going to be at 2a. So I can simply take my formula from here and substitute in x is equal to 2a. So I'm going to get y will equal 2 times uv, did we have uv anywhere? Uh, it was 2ag, actually, I could, I could substitute in for u and v, but I've actually got it quite nicely here. So 2 times 70.2 times 9.8. And then I'm timesing by x, which is, um, remember, a was 70.2, so it's 2 times 70.2 here. Minus g 
times 2 times 70.2 all squared all over 2 u squared which is going to give me 63 root 13 over 5 all squared. Sorry, I'm not sure why I didn't, I should have written 9.8 here. Okay, I'm just going to carefully put this in now. So the nice thing about this is that I've not rounded at all, which gives us an exact answer of 46.8. Okay, so that is the maximum height. By the way, do I'm not going to go into like this is already quite a long video. I'm not going to go into any more detail. But uh, there are alternative solution methods. I, I've mentioned two, but yeah, have a little look if you're interested. All right, right, right back to the start. State one refinement of the model other than including error resistance that would make it more realistic. So I personally put take into account the dimensions because we've been assuming it's a particle and has no dimensions essentially. Okay, just a few others from the mark scheme. So the size, that is the same as dimensions. Actually, the, yes, the same as the particle bit. Spin, a few of these are kind of repeated. Wind and weather, thickness of the wall, because we've kind of said it's like in, infinitesimally thin, really. Clearance, um, or maybe other, I'm sure there's other answers as well. Okay, I'll say well done on this paper. Keep going.